So my name is uh, Colton Piper, and my advisor for this RU program is Dr. Craig Jackson. And I I'm doing anal analysis of climate feedback processes, local versus non-local effects. Uh, all right, so basically to start out, little introduction. Uh, a feedback loop is any system which the, a fraction of the output gets put back into the system as input. And there are many feedbacks in the climate system uh, which govern how our, climates, how, how our climate is and how it is structured. And, and uh, so in the climate context, context uh, basically we usually start out by adding some energy to the, uh, energy to the system and usually it results, in a, uh, it results in a change in temperature. And so, the, uh, fee so, and feedback, so feedback processes, they can either be positive or negative in which they amplify the addition of heat or they uh, suppress it. We're, and it's important because uh, this can like, determine whether, like, determine whether uh, pro uh, the climate is, like, gets shot wicked to uh, high temperatures or low temperatures or finds a nice stable equilibrium like we're at right now. And uh, so basically the two, uh, the two feedbacks that we're going to be doing that we studied in this uh, analysis is the ice albedo feedback where uh, albedo is, describes the amount of light an object reflects and if earth, is, which, if earth was cooled or, or heated um, it would melt, uh, melt a, lot of the, a lot of the ice and that would, incre that would uh, lower the albedo and it would mean earth would absorb even more heat and uh, raise the temperature even more, melting more ice. And there's wa a water vapor feedback in which uh, water vapor is a greenhouse gas and it uh, keeps, keeps the heat inside. Keeps, so if, the, if we were to heat the earth a little bit, it would, be, it, would, it would increase the temperature of the earth even more. And that means there'd be even more water vapor in the air. And uh, so basically, so basically for if, when you uh, try to analyze feedbacks for their strengths, and uh, even uh, interactions. Uh, basically, you want to start out with like just seeing how like how the how the climate would change if you added some heat into the climate. How it would change without with feedbacks held constant or there's no feedbacks. And that that's our base climate uh, base temperature change, uh, delta T naught. And a feedback loop feeds part of the, a fraction a fraction of the output back into the uh, system as input and. And when that happens, it was going to change. It's going to have a um, produce a different temperature change than the base temperature change, which would be delta T, T alpha. And so basically, we have a. Uh, so you can see this nice uh, diagram. This would be for like a zero-dimensional model, which is where Earth would be just one temperature and one average temperature. And so basically, we have our feedback sensitivity, which would be like um, the diff the change in temperature over the um, amount of heat you added initially. Or you could have the climate sensitivity, base sensitivity, which would be just the, uh, the change in temperature with, with feedback cell constant over the, uh, over the in initial addition of heat. And um, so we can define the gain as the difference in temperature with uh, feedbacks active over the, different, the change in temperature, sorry, uh, of the, uh, the change in temperature with, with the feedback cell constant. And the cool thing about the gain is that it can tell, it can tell us um, if the if the feedback's positive, if it's greater than one, or if it's negative, which is zero to one. Uh, so basically, uh, Dr. Jackson uh, um, uh, developed this uh, new approach to uh, analyzing feedbacks, a matrix approach. So basically, um, in Earth, we have uh, heat transport mechanisms. So like, if you were to heat, like, if you were to add like heat to the poles, like it would get circulated all throughout the Earth, and it wouldn't just stay in the poles. So that means that if we had like a higher resolution model with many cells um, in Earth, that the feedbacks, each cell if, um, would feed back into one cell. So you'd have like each of these cells going, have their own feedback um, into each cell separately. And so, um, so we can have, we're going to have a sensitivity matrix and a, a gain matrix. And these gain matrices can be computed by finding the sensitivity matrices. Now, um, the gain matrix, the gain matrix can tell us like if the feedback is a local or non-local process, and um, of the gain matrix, the diagonals would tell us if like the local contributions, while the non-diagonals uh, would tell us the uh, non-local contributions to the cell. 
And so the, the models we used were from Badico and North. And they were basically both just energy balance equations with a surface energy balance of incoming radiation um, minus outgoing radiation. And the only difference between the two models really was the heat transport term, where Badico um, uh, compared the temperature of the cell compared to the uh, average temperature of the Earth. And uh, North used a diffusion process. And so some results we got, we computed uh, gain matrices for the surface albedo feedback and the uh, water vapor feedback and the surface albedo and water vapor together. And so we can see that um, some of the different, there are differences in each of the gain matrices. And this is logri log logarithmic scaled. And um, so first off, um, we can see that in Badico's um, gain matrix, in both Badico's and North, Near the ice line, there, that's where the most uh, non-local effect has like a um, non-local contribution, so the highest, which makes sense because that's where the temp, that's where the addition, um, that's where the feedback is most uh, active, where uh, where the ice line is, and uh, and they are there are slight differences like Badico's uh, the uh, the non-local effects um, towards uh, the uh, ice line regions have a higher um, contribution than the other ones. Uh, so the water vapor f feedbacks, they were a little bit different but, um, than each other. But um, so for Badico's, you can see that the, the water vapor is much more prevalent. Uh, the the non-local water vapor uh, contributions are much more prevalent near the, uh, near the equator. And, and that makes sense because the water vapor is, uh, I mean, it's more present in the air and near the equator compared to the poles. And north are more like near the, near the uh, nearing uh, nearby cells where it's, uh, the contributions are higher. And, that's part, and this is, the differences are just um, all because of the heat transport term. I can say that again. And, and the, the surface albedo plus the water vapor feedback are basically just, uh, you can see there the two main, the two main features of the water vapor and the surface albedo just kind of in there. Um, so the last thing we did was uh, we added the, we uh, plotted the diagonal entries, um, which are the local contributions, compared to the sum of the non-diagonal entries of each row, and we were to see if it, the, pro the uh, feedback was a local or non-local process. And we can see that the albedo, um, the albedo, where the solid lines are the uh, diagonal entries, and the the dashed lines are these, um, some of the non-diagonal entries. Uh, we can see that the albedo is a much more non-local, pro uh, much more local process compared to the water vapor, which is a much, it's like even between a non-local and a local process. And um, we can see, and it, it's cool to see the, uh, the water vapor plus this uh, surface albedo because it kind of shows us how like that, uh, in both of these, that how interactions between feedbacks aren't just linear, you don't just add them together. They are much more complex than that. And so basically, you can see that these two, they're pretty close to the same graphs with only minor differences. And that's just from the heat transport term. And that's basically my project. And I just want to thanks, uh, thank National Science Foundation for funding it, and Obu for letting me uh, do the research here, and Dr. Jackson for mentoring me. And that's it.